All right, the time is here. Take advantage. If you're interested in promoting your brand here at Viral Hip Hop News, music, brand, or even yourself, email me, Sam Ant at dlsmediainc1 at gmail.com for more information. Don't wait. Let's go. Welcome to another episode of the Hip Hop Uncensored Podcast. I'm your brother, old guy from Hip Hop News Uncensored. And sitting across from me is my co host. What up, what up, y'all? It's your man, Sam, and CEO of Viral Hip Hop News. You're in the building for another edition of the Hip Hop Uncensored Podcast. We got a special guest back in the building. I don't know what round this is with the OG Pod 234, whatever it is. <laughs> OG Nino Cappuccino back yeah. in the podcast. What up with you, family? How you feeling? What's up with it? What's up with it out there, TV Land? What's up with it? You already know, man. It's your boy, man. It's your favorite host, that is, too, man. The Rules of Engagement. CEO Nino Cappuccino, a.k.a. Bunny Hunter BJ, man. The brand. It's always a pleasure, man, when I sit down with my two bros right here, man. And, uh, we just chop it up, man, on... Whatever the topics may be, I don't know what the topics is. The is on hand right now today. I'm just prepared because I know when they come, they gonna come, man. How y'all been though, man? Maintain it, man. Maintain it for sure. Ain't that the truth, yeah. man? It is, this game is crazy, man. But we we still weaving our way through it and doing our thing, man, and trying to stamp our way as one of the best out here, man. So we definitely appreciate you reaching out. You know what I'm saying? And, and getting the OG's perspective on a lot of bullshit we seeing out here. And, a lot of good shit, you know what I mean? We're going to give it a nice mix of both. But um, let's start here real quick, man, because today i seen that NBA young boy, young rapper, man, real successful motherfucker, but a dude that seems just can't keep getting out of his own way. Got hit up with some major shit in Utah today, bro. I don't know if you've seen it, but if you did, man, what's your thoughts on it as an OG that was out there doing, you know what I mean, what you were doing and got about that shit? So what do you, what's your thoughts on that? It's crazy that you mentioned that, and that's the first question that you asked me because I was going in on it tomorrow on my own channel as far as my commentary about it because it, it, it don't make sense, bro. It just don't make freaking mm -hmm. sense. And like when I sent you the video last night and the purpose of the video was <clears throat> speaking on the analogy of the dead homie disrespect, right? For one of, of individuals disrespecting the deceased, especially when you don't even know these people when they, they were far out of your lead or, was deceased before you even started calling yourself gang banging or being a member of the hoods. And most of them niggas ain't even from the hoods, but they put it on the dead homies. So moving along to my second topic was making it out. What's the sole purpose of making it out if you're not going to completely allow yourself to be out? You feel me? It's like a part of you in, but you made it out. No, there ain't no such thing. It's either making it out, you make it out, bro. And you got to thank God for those blessings that you made it out. You know what I'm saying? So to answer that question of a uh, young NBA young boy, this is a kid that um he's mentally disturbed, bro, for one. I mean, let's come on. Let's put that on the table. Let's, let's make that evaluation for show thorough right now. This young kid is mentally disturbed because of the drugs, obviously. And that's a lot of them. And then... Point blank, they have no type of real, thorough father, big brother, big uncle, real big homie, or real management leadership behind them, bro. So they're going to constantly crash like they crash, like the crash dummies they are. Most of them were handpicked to be in hip-hop and be in this little circle anyway because they was willing to sell their souls and do whatever is necessary anyway. Mm. You no, know? And it's just sad, bro, because this is a young kid who – has inf influential power to be able to take this generation that we're in now today, the youngest that we are in today, our kids, our nephews, nieces, grandbabies to be, and some grandbabies is born today already is, is in this era, 8, 9, 10, 11 years old, and they can take that influencement to another level for us because our culture is already, we, we sinking, bro, just as a culture in general, just from a black man perspective, just that, that's the label that they put us on you know black that that yeah. color black you know what i mean i i like i have the tendency to say asiatic you know or you know african but man it, it's just crazy because we, we're constantly sinking bro we're not gaining the momentum of us as a culture and, and, and rebuilding as a nation we're not regaining we're not rebuilding in no fashion at that level we constantly fucking sinking man Right. And do you feel like at a certain point when he was crying out for help, posting up pictures of him with perk bottles, Xanax bottles, um, doing a few different interviews where he was talking about, you know, his influence on the youth. Do you think he was kind of like, you know, crying out for help and nobody showed up to help him? See, now that's that's crazy you say that. And you know what? 
He truly was. And the reason why I say that, it's not just him. It's a whole lot of them that cries out. They cry out in their music. When they start switching up their music, and they start switching up the momentum as far as their lyrics and 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 um, they, they you know metaphors as far as the message that they're supposed to be delivering because they're paid to deliver these particular messages. But then they kind of sidetrack a little bit. That's because they're trying to go against the script now and they're crying out for help because they know, man, I, I, I effed up, man. I went over here. I didn't know it was, it was really, really red over here. Like this really flaming fire over here on this end, man. You know what I'm saying? So this is their form of crying out. And they cry out subliminally. Instead right. of just going to get real professional help. You feel what I'm saying? And this this the part where it comes in again where there's no thorough leadership around them. Because if it was, they would pick up on that. They said, come on, look, man. This enough is enough. I'm, we're going to shut you down. Let me give you a prime example real mm -hmm. quick. An incident that I seen with some of my little young homies. And the little young niggas that he was in the argument with, he don't know. Them little young niggas would have whooped his ass, would have beat the dog shit out of him if his securities would have let him go with all that woofing he was doing. And to my, oh, you all, oh, fuck all you niggas. I'm the whole, they hold me back. Yeah, they supposed to hold you back. For one, you don't know what these little young wild gangbanger niggas got over here for real, for real, but you woofing. Right. And you in a whole nother world. You supposed to be on a professional level. You feel me? So if anything, you let your securities handle situations like that. You let your boys ascertain that situation. You don't try to participate because you want the fans to see you a gangster. Mm. Niggas is getting knocked down, man. Every day in this game, man, whether it's hip hop, the streets, just real life, man. So you got to be cautious and careful. But when I seen that video and I seen how the dude who's supposed to be his security bodyguard couldn't snatch that little skinny ass nigga and throw his ass in the car and say, let's go. That right there show you he don't got the thorough leadership around him. Even his security is yes boys. Mm. Wow. Feel me? So when you got the yes men around you and the yeah, 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 and nobody's not going to take the time despite your money. I really grew up with you. I know who you are. I'm your homie or I'm your cousin. I'm your relative. I really love you and I got your best interest and I'm going to tell you when you're wrong. Then they, all of them going to continue to do just what we seeing, bro. They're going to crash like cra the crash dummies they are. What's your what's your what's your um what's your thoughts on the overall what's gonna happen? What's the end game for for NBA young boy right now in this current situation? Well, if this young nigga pop his ass up by, back out of jail right now, I, I ain't no doubt in my mind he's a CIA something. He's he's connected with something on that end because I don't understand how these niggas constantly get all these cases stacked up on them. Now I get it, because I'd have been there where I done bailed out. You know, had a case over here, then had to bail out again or caught a case. But for some reason, they call that enhancements on us. And then they call it bail revoke. So they revoke our bails and snatch us down, lock your ass down. And now you got to go to court and go through the system and, and fight your way now. For some reason, these niggas get out on case, on top of case, on top of case, on top of case. Now, he started out here in 2020, he had a gun case. Again, I understand how these young niggas is catching these three or four gun cases, illegal guns at that, and still on the streets, on probation, and get out on bails. I don't get this shit right here, Sam. So my thing is, they gave him a no bail this time. So maybe at this point, they tired. They fed up. And, and my professional opinion about it, I think that's just what it is. The system is constantly fed up. It ain't just the system. That's just the setup the way it is anyway. They set us up for it to be that way. It wasn't a 10 for a bunch of niggas mm. to become successful black millionaire men. And this is what these niggas don't realize. They allow us to become rich, man. Take advantage of that good shit. You feel me? Change your life for real, for real. Change the next generation's life for real. But instead... Niggas want to show off for the gram, show off for the tube, show off for this dinner, this network, that network, and all the time, they ain't doing that but doing they self, bro, at the end of the day. So I think they're going to really slap him with some time this time around, see? I think yeah. they're going to they gonna book his young ass. They're going to make him a prime example like they're doing a lot of them. You feel me? They're making examples of them. And, and, and as you know, we know. When you catch the federal cases like that and we come in and we start charging you, guess what? 
That means all your assets, we come and get all that. That's a wrap. You ain't paroling home now still a $15 million millionaire or $10 million millionaire. All that shit is gone. Mm. It's mm. a wrap. You feel me? Crazy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, Diddy, I know you've been following that for sure. <laughs> Oh, we we gotta we gotta wrap about that for a few minutes over here, man. Not the <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm interested to hear your perspective on the whole situation, man. <laughs> oh man, you know I, you know I had to go in on my damn self on on rules of engagement, man. So, okay, listen, man. First and foremost, for me, it's funny to sit back how you look at things and knowing. The, the real, real inside of a lot of these dudes, especially cat like him, his 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 leadership was strictly built off of the money. His power, everything was built off the money. You know, him being able to get his asshole blew out, get mentored by Clyde Davis. Clyde Davis and them freaked him all out and all the rest of them, you feel me, and flipped him to make him to be what he is because this is what he asked for, his wish. He wished this. He wanted this bad. He wanted to be the biggest thing in the world if he can be. So now this is what he got. But in terms, he got to a point where now, like a lot of them, they start trying to speak out, seeing and, and go against the what's supposed yeah. to be regulated for them, right? And w where I initially think, because I did my research a couple of nights ago, I go back, and I said, uh, this is why they coming after his ass. Oh, yeah, he out of here. He gone. Ain't, this ain't no fluke. This ain't, oh, a couple months later down the line, he going to be released. Oh, he going to be the biggest thing now, you know, on the internet. He going to be the biggest talk thing, talk show. No, his jackass is out of here because there's too many people that was afraid, too many people that he used, mm. manipulated, stomped on, walked up, especially women. Especially them emotional women, boy. And when yeah. they turn to get vengeance, oh, damn it, they going to get it. You feel me? <laughs> they going to get it. And they coming out the closet and out the woodwork. And that's only because they, some of them be like, well, why you ain't been saying nothing? My personal feeling, I think victims like that, they be want to say something a long time ago, but they know the individual power. They ain't, you ain't going to believe them people. The average motherfucker, man, get out of here. You just trying to get some money. You want to be seen. Go, go, no. So we just take take for example before we got to the social media world, the digital world. That's how it was for us on the domestic world. When somebody got sued or they came out to celebrity, they came out to somebody in the game, and the tabloids get a hold to it. First thing tabloids gonna read is oh, that person trying to get some money. They you know and like they they called it clout chasing the day back then. They called it gold digging. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like now everything that's done in the dark. Sure, shed in the light, man. And this is what's happening. It's just, it, it's beyond our control as far as the people on the outside looking in and the rest of the world as far as the consumers and the following who's following the situation. You know, it, it's unfolding and it is what it is, you know? Right. And, it, and it's dark and it's deep, bro. And it's what just done. About? That's the cold thing about it. Right. Let's just be real quick before you, whatever you question you about to ask. Yeah, that, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Do you think? Let's 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 just flip it now from him to Art Kelly. What's the fucking comparison? Uh uh. I think this nigga got him out beat, boy. Uh, I think this mm -hmm. nigga got R out beat, bro. R was fucking with women and you know and doing his thing or whatnot. But this boy, this nigga here was the grand poobah, man. <laughs> what they what the nigga say call him Pop Pablo. Pablo. That's the Pablo for them other boys on the other side. That's his name, Pablo. They don't call him Diddy over there. They call him Pablo. It's a, mm. it's a, it's a name and a definition for that power right there. Yeah. Oh, man. So he deep with it. Deep, deep with it, man. From a satanic perspective, bro. Need El Chapo this shit. Come on, man. All them damn hidden cameras. And then, you know, most of these mansions and most of these places did a lot of, you know, cats, you know, get when they're in different states and they live in a different states. They don't own these places. They lease them. Mm -hmm. And they lease under the companies. So they're all tax write-offs. It's a hustle, man. You feel me? So it's crazy that his dumb, stupid ass, A1, you so comfortable to live in L.A. now because, you know, the death row days and the, and the Simon Suge Knight days and the pocket, all that shit is over with. 
So you weren't there living in LA back in the nineties and coming up in them days in two thousand. You you, <laughs> you wouldn't dare to have nothing in, in LA, motherfucker. So that's why I laugh about certain shit. Be like, oh, these niggas are so comfortable nowadays with their gangsterism. It's crazy, man. You know. But What's yeah, your thoughts on um his like former security like Gene Deal or former artists coming out saying, oh yeah, I seen this back in two thousand one or this and this or this or this or this. What do you do? You, what, what do you? I, I ain't gonna put words in your mouth. What do you think about that dynamic? First and foremost, all in the same game, man. Big A, shout out to Big A. Yes, and I definitely, I, I definitely, definitely want to say salute. Shout out to Gene Deal, man. I be pronouncing, you know, pronouncing his wrong name wrong sometime, but I want to give. A <laughs> I know, major, nigga, you do. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I want to give a major, major shout out to that man, man, to that brother. You know why? Seeing because I respect him, bro, and. I seen him a couple of cases back in the days. I never had the opportunity to meet him face to face, but I seen him in motion moving, you know, doing our death row theory days and everything like that. So I seen him in motion moving, but I never met him. But even then, his character and the way he moved, it was militant, bro. It was respectable, just like the other brother that he, he talks about and brag about that got killed in that mm -hmm. circle. It was a couple of them on that side from the East Coast that used to move a certain way that respected us on this end because I, I was bodyguarding security back then, you know, for different situations, you know, so and put my foot down smashing on the, you know, the story East, you know, perspective as well, feel me? So during that time, I, this is how I was meeting these cats. But him particularly, I remember seeing on a couple of cases and the way he was moving, man. But I know his whole objective of being on this internet, it ain't got nothing to do with no money. It ain't got nothing to do with, oh, pay me for this interview. I got all the goods on this fool. Mm -hmm. That whole ass nigga Puffy violated him when he was the last individual on earth you should have violated because I'm the one got all your deepest, 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 deepest dark ass secrets, nigga. Because I'm your number one bodyguard. I wasn't number two or three. I was the one. Just like uh, Big Boy was was signed to him to be Big number one. But Big really was trying to build a relationship with Gene after the mm. fact, which they were. They started building a relationship, but Gene was already committed to this nigga Diddy. You feel me? So when that shit happened to, to Big, bro, that shit hurt that man. That shit broke him down. So what you see on the internet is pure hurt. Hatred and hurt. Hatred mm -hmm. did he made the call. He tried to separate that night, that day, everything he talking about, bro, because I was around. And I, he, the picture he unfold every day. So it's like when he speak on it, he's speaking on it from his heart, bro, and from pain because it was like, damn, that makes a man stop and say and go back 10, 15 years ago and reflect on your boy or your boy getting hit. And you go, if I would, I could have, should have. Because all it took was that if I would have, could have, should have thought that night and he could have stopped that shit or shut something down or made a maneuver another way. Feel me? But nigga was following the protocol, following his orders, following what it was supposed to be. But still, he had his own subconscious mind as a leader that, man, something ain't right. This shit ain't right, man, because Big ain't supposed to be out here, period. He ain't supposed to have his ass in no party in L.A., period. Right. We already discussed this. Son, you feel me? <laughs> so... What makes you think all the stuff that people are saying about Diddy is true? Well, what makes me think is true, uh, you know, like Philly say, man, you know, like like Armor Man Philly say, man, you know, at first it started out, did he do it? Now he's did he did it? <laughs> man. I see it. Did he do it? Did he did it, man? Hey, what makes you think it's true based on right now so far what they have provided to the media. Right. Allegedly, right. everything that's allegedly thus so far, it's a it's a it's a drawn perfect picture that a lot of this shit gotta be true. This can't be made up. Nigga, ain't no 25, 30 people just woke up one day and say, hey man, we off an attack, Diddy. Let me go back real quick before I, I, I lose my memory about it, because I started yeah. on talking about it, and it was yeah. based on the Clyde Davis situation. What this is all unfolding, what this is all about, you guys, is this, man. 
the power within. Again, here's another black man who made it to the top, who became a successful billionaire with the B. He once went through the M. He started out with the one, then he went through the M, then he hit the B. But when he got to the top of the B, now he didn't got besides himself. See, this is the type of nigga we talking about and dealing with. He didn't got up there now with them where he, I'm one of you motherfuckers. I'll, I'll pull one of you niggas out the way now. Oh, you will, Sean? Yeah. Hold up. We, we fucking made you a little narrow ass. Hold on <laughs> now. And see, and this is how he talks. So he got to a point where he made a statement in 2020 at the Source Awards yeah. about the music. And that was the wrong thing he could have ever done being from that side. See, you ain't over here with this side and you made your money and your millions because you're still in the million bracket and you're comfortable with that bracket and you don't got smut. No, you went over there, you chose your life and you chose that side. So it's rules over there that you got to buy by. And he violated them rules. So we all know, you know, at some time, at some point in this game, if you're in the, from the inside know that it takes a little time. It may take a second because that's what they do. Give you a minute. This is 2020. This is 24. But all during that duration, if you notice, certain little controversies start happening. So now comes time for the, 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 the reconnection of a new contracting binding involved where we need to re-sign sign some things and do some re-signing on this contract with you. And he said, no, man, he shut him down, bro. See, people ain't talking about this. A lot of the media ain't speaking on this. Only certain individuals on the inside is speaking on it. But this shit all boiled out to he didn't want to sign that new contract and he didn't want to sign whatever was presented to him right now. He shut it all down. So they said, okay, we know what to do. So this is what we're watching. This is what we're seeing. This is what we're seeing unfold right now before our eyes. The same individuals that put his ass up there, they tearing his ass right down. If you think it's bullshit, why would they have his number one mentor on the number one indictment for coming in to testify against him? Ask yourself that, man. It's deep. It's heavy, ain't it? Mm. Who's that it's number one? one? Clyde Davis, man. Yeah. The number one, they, they indicted him first for questioning. And it ain't no bad thing for him. He ain't in trouble. Right. And you you wonder why? Because who's to say he ain't a part of that inner circle just making it all happen? I'm just saying. I'm just putting it out there, you know. No, nah, we don't. You know, I, I still want to keep my job on my channel, but I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> now we we talked about that angle. We we talked. We we laid it all out. You know what I mean? And one of those yeah, angles was true. one of yeah. the situations was did he piss somebody off? And now they got control of deep dark things he may have done. And now it's time to come to light. And we've always asked why, 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 why. And you laid out your why. And I, yeah. I I appreciate it. I thought it was interesting. You but know look, what I mean? But, but look, look, look at the but look at the battle though. See, look at the look at the the right hook. Left hook that shitty Diddy gonna be able to come back with though. He got all those hidden fucking palace secrets on powerful people in them fruity tooty parties, man. Yeah. See, that's his defense. That's his that's his get back right there. So certain individuals, the power within is just gonna dodge out in the dark and just fade back and get out the way altogether. And, you know, just as long as he don't mention me and I ain't, they don't try to in, indict me and tell me to come in for questions, I ain't questioned against him. I'm I'm just out the way. And then it's going to be a battle, man. And then it's like those who, like, know that it's a possibility your ass is on some of them tapes, boy, getting real, real buck wow that you don't want the public to see, Mr. Politician or Mayor or Congressman. Right. You feel me? You got your ass up there, Mr. T.D. Jakes. You know what mm. I mean? Got your, got your little chunky ass up there and shit, swaying and shit at the party. Man, you supposed to be spitting the gossip to us trying to change our lives. Yeah. Feel me? You up here seeing it, man. It's a cruel world we in, bro. What was I going to ask you? I wanted to ask you something pertaining to that. I've lost my damn train of thought. Um. Anyway, let me move on real quick before, and if I get back to that thought, I'll remember it. You sent me a video yesterday of people talking on the dead homies 
You know what I mean? How disrespectful that is. And it is so true. And one person we see doing that in particular is Charleston White. Now, he's came out and said he's playing a character. One hell of a character, I may add, because on one side, he <laughs> say some things. you like, damn, you're right. And then on the other side, he do some things so disrespectful. It's like, bro, what in the hell are you thinking? And then in the middle, here's this character that he's playing in real life. What's your thoughts on him, man? Now, I never I never heard your thoughts on, on Charleston White and, and just his overall. Oh, no, I, 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 right I, now. I gave my thoughts on I gave my thoughts on him, man. His little weenie ass acted like a little weenie and got the crying about it, you know, because I spoke uh, and it was a positive situation that I spoke on. It wasn't no attack to the fool or none of that, man. But uh Big D, shout out to Big D, rest in peace, man. Mo Gill, man, uh state of mind. I was on his show down there in Texas, man, the DFW, man, in Dallas. And uh he asked me about it. I said, oh shit, man, uh, you know, as far as I know, you know. Me and the brother had, you know, we had a cool understanding of everything. So we, I ain't never had no problem, no issue with him. He ain't never disrespected me. I said, he ain't going to disrespect me because, feel me, we got that type of understanding. And I just holler at the nigga and get at him. I'm not going to do this internet shit with him. And I don't do all the mama and daddies and all that. So um, I haven't seen anything currently because I don't, I don't follow him like that. I don't right. pay attention to his material. I don't pay attention to his videos unless it pops up on my timeline. Right. And again, it's on one of these big platforms when he's on his proactive tip. That's why I say, like you just said, the, the, the brother can speak on some real, real valid shit, man, and have some valid, valid points that have you going, damn. Mm -hmm. You can't you can't be mad no matter who the messenger is. If it was somebody else that said it, you can't be mad because that shit was facts and the truth. And a lot of people, the truth just sink in where it hurts. It's just him, his delivery. I get that shit all the time. Motherfuckers tell me, oh, the way you talk and your mannerism and your aggression. Man, so I, I dig it. So it's like I never subconsciously took any type of awareness as far as complex about the way he talked, none of that shit. Even when he was on his disrespecting, you know, the blood and crypt thing, I, wasn't, I didn't give a fuck about none of that shit because I feel like this. A real man... And a real warrior, you're gonna do that shit. You're gonna do it in, in the presence of a real blood or a crip or a real enemy if you really feel that way and you wanna be that disrespectful and that violent to all the niggas. That's the way it would be. So I learned the separation and the differentiator of what this internet means yeah. internet entertainment. Internet entertainment. That's all it is, but feel me? It ain't got shit to do with I'm the realest, hardest gangster in the world. Oh, like most of you niggas on this internet ain't gangster shit. <laughs> it's internet entertainment, man. Period, man. I think so, a lot of people get frustrated with that because people really want to be real on here. but And you can be. I ain't saying you can't be. But remember what trumps all that, and that's entertainment on this internet shit. Right, right. So, yeah, so but just in, in general, like I say, I just, I haven't seen, um, like I said, a video you just spoke on when you said he was speaking on dead homies. Just kind of enlighten me on what, what happened. What did what, what, what he say? Or um, is that, is that something he, he's just going around saying in general now? Things, he, things he's done in the past and then just recently, it, him and Gilly have been going back and forth and he he was, you know what I mean, definitely poking fun at Gilly for the passing of his son out in Philadelphia. And um, he gave perspective on it. Like he he gave us both them sides of the scale. He gave us the real, real disrespect. And it was like, goddamn. And then he gave us the other side on why. And it just, I, I don't know. It, it's, it's weird. Oh, so, I, 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 go on, my bad. Oh, so are you, you so you ba you basically speaking on in terms of his his derogatory, just flat out disrespect about the deceased period. Like when he just say, fuck such and such, dead such and such, and da da da. Is that, you speaking on that terms? Yeah, he said, I piss on your son. Maybe he rested okay. and, yeah. and, and all this stuff. And like, like you said, like, his his reasoning, he has his reasoning, and one could kind of un understand and contextualize. Okay, this is this makes sense. Mm -hmm. but on the other end, it's a man's dead son, man's body still warm, right? Ripping him to shreds, and it's like, ooh, I don't know if I can handle that person. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how I couldn't do it. I don't know. Right. That was Kevin Capone. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, shit, man, that's 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 crazy, man. But no, at the same token, my perspective of it was talking about how this generation have took like remember back in the days 
it all started in the 80s for us, in the, in, in the 80s. It was the early 80s, you know, when it was, you know, started out on swearing on your mother or swearing on your father was a valid of truth. It was basically a valid of truth to the streets. So if you heard a person say that or make that statement, you know, okay, they say for real. So you you were taking that sincere. Right. So from, from there, it went from swearing on your moms, your pops, or your auntie, you know, somebody close to you in your family to put that on something. I put that on the hood, nigga. That's on the hood. Or that's on the B. Or that's on the C. So it went from I put that on the C, the B, or on the hood. And then coming into the millennium area, again, like everything changes. Every generation, each generation goes through a change transition. We all must know that and understand that as G's, that every generation is going to have a transition to change. We can't expect every generation to be exactly like our generation was. Or it'll be all volatile, fucked up, because we was volatile in them 80s. That's why yeah. it was called the bloody 80s. And only a certain type of individual survived in them bloody 80s. And I thank God I could tip my hat off. I'm still here. From gunshot wounds, stabbed up, baseball bat, stomped down. Oh, the whole nine of really experiencing that gang warfare territory and gang culture. And to still be here to teach and talk about it. Not brag about it, not glorify it. Teach and talk about it, man. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's just it's crazy how now you could take a newer generation and they take something that was already established from an origin, and now they flip everything that was established into something new. But the new is damaging to us. Don't get me wrong. We had things and trends that we did was very damaging to damaging to our culture. Damage to, to individuals just as black, brown, just the, the whole culture in, the, in general back in those days, man, because that's who was primary target, the blacks and the Mexicans. Right. We, we were the one living in the poverty stricken areas, the poverty stricken homes, you know, these, these ghettos that they call ghettos. So we the one suffered and we the one did all the d dirty work, all the devil advocates for everything to happen the way it happened. So when I sit back as a general, man, a retired general in the game, can really sit back and voice my opinion while I voice my opinion and speak the way I speak thoroughly as a man, a father, a grandfather, an uncle, a big brother, you know what I mean? A concerned individual of my community, the kids of the community, bro, because that's what it's about for me, the kids. I don't give a shit about you old grown ass niggas, none of that shit. I don't care, man, because y'all don't give a shit. It's about the kids, even your own kids. I care about your kids. Because you really don't care, because if you did, you would get them up out of there. Right. You feel what I'm saying? A real man, you're going to get them up out of any harm's way, any suffering. Man, the hell with this, man. I got to make a change. So that's my feeling about it. So, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm heavy and deep about that, bro. So, so when it comes down to I start hearing these young niggas on the internet, on the set, on the dead homies, homie. Oh, you know, I mean, word for word, bro. Now they went, they went from the nigga, took the nigga word, because they gave that shit up. They let us be culture jack for that and gave that to all the cultures of America now. Mm. Feel me? The whole rainbow culture can call us nigga, and it's cool. Alibaba, way over in Iraq. Hey, my nigga. What's up, my nigga? <laughs> it's cool. Right. Oh man, you know, man, you know why you tripping, big homie? You know what? You know the shit that. that so for me, I'm like, bro, we we been pissed on. I remember nights and days, nigga, in them four yards facilities. Had to get down against them Mexican mafias and and go against them real thorough Chicano hitters. Mm. But they couldn't dare call us nigga. They called mm. us mayate in Spanish. Couldn't nobody call us nigga because we was pro-black in the inside. We was together. We was unified. So for me to know that I had to program myself, I remember my big homie telling me specifically once I got to the yard from the county, I was going to transition from that word, me and my dogs. So I started practicing on it in the county. So once I got to the pen, I wasn't saying the N-word. I substituted from nigga to ninja. So... It's crazy for me that after I got out of doing prison time and I ain't hit a yard in about 33 years and I went 20 some years of my life on the streets still standing my pro-black reason but 
Then got into the hip hop scene and fucked around. I started using the N word again, bro. So using it and knowing how strong it was for us as being black men trying to stray away from it in the prison system. Where did we get to the point now where we just gave the shit to the goddamn other coaches and it's cool? I said, oh, no, man. I'm, I'm so glad I'm done with this shit. I'm done, done. Yeah. Man, I'm so glad I'm done, man. I yeah. can live my life and I ain't tripping on nothing. As long as you don't come over here and step on these toes, I'm done, man. Feel me? Wow. And then, so, and then on top of that, all my deceased homies, young, old, my peers, to my big homies, when you say on the dead homies, nigga, that's plural. I don't know if you recognize that or not, TV land ass niggas. That's plural, many more than one. You would say on little Bobby, on little Tuka, on who who who. You know none of that. Like the little youngster from Chicago. I don't know his little name. Little wild, little young. I think it's little 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 bony ass, little skinny little nigga. Uh, I think he's funny though, man. I think he's little. He, he got he doing his little thing. Doing his little, little brand. Uh, Look, famous Amos is that a name? Look, famous Andy or something? Famous and uh, damn, not, damn, not you know, Dex, huh? Not famous Dex. No, famous something, man. He's a little bitty youngster though. Got no. a little squeaky voice. He be all on no jumper, man. Oh, I yeah. oh, watch that shit. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah but any who's, yeah, any who's. It's just it's crazy because it's like, bro. He swear on Tuka. Everything come out of my own Tuka. That's on Tuka. On GD, on BD, on Tuka. Some some be saying, right? And now, but on the West, these niggas on the dead homies. On the dead homies. On the dead homies. It's just like the music, man. It's like niggas just jump trend from trend with this music and, and the wording and shit, man. It's like, bro, do you understand the disrespect that that is to, to neighborhoods and to people who really, really put that work in, who people really, really put that work in for this C's and B's or this Kiway and Damu thing, man, that you really don't even know nothing about. You don't even really know the real origin and history of this shit. You just came about as a millennium young nigga and you decided to be from this hood or this hood and now you think everything is just cultural because this is what y'all say it is. Bro, people died for this shit when once about a time Los Angeles, individuals in LA really strongly, heavily believe in this blood and crip shit, nigga. That blue and that blue and red really truly existed in this city once upon a time, and niggas died from it. Innocent people died if you rolled the wrong color or got mm -hmm. your head busted upside the head or slapped upside the head. Niggas got ran down on for the wrong color. Yeah, we was all missed the school, we was effed up in the head. Bamboozle, all that. But that's how sincere it was, man. So to take it to where it is today, and I'm able to live through this shit and see it, and some of my peers are still allowed to date us around, real ones, man, they feel the same way. I'm going like this. Oh, my goodness, bro. Oh, my goodness. This shit, is this what this has come to? So, yeah, I thank God, man, I was able to get out the quicksand, bro. Right. Bro. What do you think about a guy like Wack 100? I don't know if you have a relationship with him. What's your thoughts on how he kind of holds the flag up or, you know, any moves around the internet world? Well, see, now, y'all, but shots fired, man. Shots fired, man. See, uh -huh. man. Shots fired. See, now, I, I normally, I'm the type of individual, I'm like this, bro. I don't, I don't necessarily like speaking on a lot of these niggas' names okay. on the internet or even giving them dissatisfaction, you know what I mean? But I don't have issues with individuals to the point where, you know, I'm going I'm to come over here and take the take advantage of this moment to talk about a nigga because I'm on your channel or I'm on a certain platform, right? That's but I'm, I am going to answer your question on my opinion from a professional level. I'm going to answer your question, homie, which, which I would ask any individual's question who asks me of any individuals. Uh, first and foremost, I just seen the clip just recently, just got to me, surfaced to me finally on um dude speaking on my name, him and Adam on Adam's show, because I had got an offer. They offered, they wanted me to do a sit down and interview with him and Adam. And I told him, make the numbers right. So they hit me, you know, he hit me back, you know, 
you know, in reference, like, oh, I forgot, you know, we were whoop. We don't really pay for that particular show. I said, well, y'all don't want me on that show then, basically. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, that's how that worked out. You know, I'm I'm not doing no freebie sitting down with now individuals, especially on, on them levels. We ain't doing no freebie shit. Mm-hmm. We're going we gonna to sit down and make it happen for the culture. Feel me? And I know you niggas going to eat. Then I'm going to eat, too. I'm going to have me a big-ass plate with some, some whatever dessert food I want on my plate. I'm going to have it, too. Damn it. Oh, it ain't going to happen. So that's how that came about. But uh, my my personal professional opinion about this dude, man, is the bottom line is this, man, is um, he's in a great position in his life, too. Just like the NBA young boy situation we were just talking about, a lot, a lot, of, a lot of other these young cats. And as well as himself, that nigga ain't got no thorough leadership behind him neither. He ain't got nobody to stop him and say, hold on, homie, slow down, slow your roll, my nigga, because... To him, he's that nigga. Feel me? He's that nigga to him. So for him, any niggas under him is I'm that nigga to them niggas. So I'm that nigga. So you when you when you standing on a certain pedestal like that and you don't have nobody to really pull your coattail, say, look, come here, young homie. Cause he's a young homie to me. You know, um, to tell you, man, look, nigga, you in a great position. Cause this is what I would tell a nigga face to face. If I was sitting down with him and just for the record, uh, I'm going to continue my path of of what I'm saying. But just for the record, going back to reflect the video, I said the clip was sent to me. His reflection was he was asked, you know, would you sit down with uh, Bonnie Hunter BJ and do an interview? And say, yeah, you know, I'll sit down with him, man. You know, it's cool. I ain't got no problem with him. A problem with, you know, doing an interview, you know. uh, Yeah, you know, uh, shit, you know, I I holler at his homies. You know, they say they say that's their homie. First and foremost, uh, bro, can't no nigga on this internet, on the streets, whack, wacky. Ain't no nigga, nowhere. You, nobody. Can't no nigga make no phone call to Nixon Garden on me to get reference on me, nigga. My name is solidified for real, for real. Period. Point blank. And most of the time when a lot of these niggas is asking the so-called young homies, from my era, my hood, ain't my young homies that I grew up with or I grew up under me that I know that's my homeboy's kids because that's who all my young homies I know, all my baby homies, I know them from birth. They been, they grew up from the projects from birth. They was raised. Not no walk-ons 10 years, uh, five years here, eight years. Or, or you was, your mama been here, but you moved to Tennessee and came back 25 years later. No, nigga, that ain't no day one shit. I know all my day one unos. So if you ain't talking to somebody who really know me, know me, that shit don't mean nothing at the end of the day. So cats got to get out of that that wave or a way you think because you on the internet or you call a nigga or you talk to a certain individual, it makes a difference. Nah, bro, what makes a difference is, is that nigga resume really what it is? Because in real life, your name is your name, man. You know what I'm saying? And I stand on my name by all costs, by all means. And that's for any individual, any nigga, man, period. So now back to my my my, my answer on hand as far as my opinion is that, like I say, the brother's in a, in, 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 a, in a position where he could really, really take this um, – this generation that he's from, because he's 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 nothing but a generation above this millennium generation that's out today. He's a generation right above that, just before the millennium generation. He's out of that, excuse me, out of that ninety generation, the last of the nineties, going into the two thousands. So, for him to be standing on the pedestal that he's standing on, man, I personally, when I speak on it and when I'm asked about him, you know. I, I, I don't I, I don't talk about any individual or no nigga or no man that I'm not going to tell him in his face or I can't tell him how I feel in his face or from a negative perspective. But I've always said, bro, this nigga got the, you know, he, he got the torch right now as far as from the Damu perspective and the West perspective as far as his seat that he's sitting in where he can make a big difference for a lot of the young homies that fucks around, even the Keyways, the Crips that fucks with him or Niggas that look up to him, basically. You know what I'm saying? Um, and he can change some things. But instead, it's like, 
we may be looking at a situation and, and then i don't know he kind of just slowed down i don't and maybe i i don't I, i'm wrong because like i said i don't follow him i don't follow his pages i don't and i damn sure don't do that old bullshit coward ass uh alph alphabet boy cia uh uh uh, uh platoon uh, what you call that goddamn shit with all the niggas on the phone like walking oh, talking? Well, well. I don't do none of that bullshit, man. You feel me? So I don't follow. It. So I don't know what's going on. But like I said, he's in a position, man, where he should make a transition and a change to a lot of positive perspectives, man, so he can get a lot of other shit up off himself as well, man, the controversy and the – the social media bullshit that's been going on, man. Cause like I say, man, it's 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 time for a new era, man, and, and, and a new agenda with this shit, bro. And it's gotta come from us. And it's like, it's like I'm one, <clears throat> I'm one general. I'm not I'm not 20 generals. I ain't 20 individuals. I'm not one leader, you know, to to, to amount it to 20. I'm one individual with a vision who wanna see change within our people. Real talk. And it's like, if I can get 10 of us to feel that way, just on these pedestals, your money right, whatever situation you're in, it don't got to necessarily be the film, the music, the sports. You could be a common individual, but you have a vision and you have a passion for your people. It's like, bro, we got to, something got to happen, man. Something has to, has to give in order for us to have a transition of a, a, a different change and a different movement, something got to happen, bro. And what has to happen is unification. That's the only way anything will happen is we got to come together with some form of unity. And from unity has to be trust. And that's a major issue. Nobody trusts nobody now. Period. Unfortunately. You know what I'm saying? Period. So it's like, then what do we do? You know what I mean? So instead, we we tear each other. Like, you ask me that question, bro, and rightfully I go, I say, yeah, nigga, fuck that nigga on Bunny Hunter's blood. That nigga ain't shit. Woo, 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 but I can give the people what they want. Because this is what they would expect. Ooh, that nigga just asked Bunny Hunter BJ how he feel about such and such. But I'm not finna do no shit like that. I'm not finna put myself in a position like that, bro, from a professional standpoint, because it's already been done over and over and over and over and over again. Why we keep tearing each other down, my nigga? Why? It don't make no sense to me, bro. So I ain't no internet banger. I'm not no internet tough guy, nigga. If I had a problem with that nigga, I'd rather be in that nigga face and tell him in his face. Mm. Feel me? I'd rather be right there. Yeah, nigga, check this out. Yeah, nigga, me out at you. Because guess what, TV land? That's how I introduced myself to him four years ago. He may have a memory lapse right now because on the DVD, on his own his own interview, he said, I don't really know him. I don't know the OG like that. So let me refer, re go back and rephrase you, uh, Wacky. You met me before. But what you remember of me probably is Nino Cappuccino, not Barney Hunter BJ, because that was my introduction to you. I told you my name was CEO Nino Cappuccino, a.k.a. Bonnie and BJ from Nixon Guard. I met him at the Staples Center, bro. I'm at the Staples Center. Where, you know, I'm, 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 I'm working at night. I'm getting down with ASAP Rocky and them and shit, you know, my boys and them. So we doing a, a collaboration with TDE. They doing a major collaboration this night with TDE. So it's a big old thing at the Staples Center. I push up on them. I see a crowd come in, entourage. It's him and his little boys and shit. I wiggle my way. I say, so I asked one of the young homies. I say, I say, who is that? Is that the uh, the little nigga they be telling us who? Woo? He said, yeah, big homie, that's him. Matter of fact, it was my little homie J Rock. So I spent. Woo! I walked up on him, slid right up through the little crowd, slid up through his little security, slid right up on him. Woo! Tapped him. Say, homie. He turned around. I said, what's up with him? Look, extended his hand. I extended my hand. We shook hands. I gave him my my slogan as far as my name, who I was, where I was from. He told me, okay, cool, boom. We exchange phone numbers, bro. We exchange phone numbers. I called a dude a couple times. Mm -hmm. Hit him. We chopped for a second. Boom. And then from there, I just, just lost contact. Where I just, I didn't never call back. I didn't stay on him consistently or persistently or nothing like that. I just drifted. Because I believe my last call, I called to him. Because my whole thing was, if I'm a fuck with this dude, 
in any form, I'm going to be the nigga that's going to be behind him and be with him and be in his ear and tell a nigga when he's wrong and shut him down. And tell a nigga, that, young homie, that ain't necessary. Right. Get the money, nigga. Let's keep building. Let's let's build this shit the way it's supposed to be built because, you know, operation is in effect. You know what I mean? Same thing I would have did with Simon Fat Ass if the nigga would have been listening to me if I was uh, 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 Ma James position. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? But see, yeah. I, see the thing about the industry when it comes to me, seeing the reason why I ain't got my CEO run, because these niggas kept me out the way. They keep speaking on my name behind them closed doors, because niggas know my problem. They know I move a certain way, and I move strategic, and I move real. And if I'm a move, real niggas going to eat. I'm finna really feed niggas. I'm going to really build. I'm going to really change the game. They kept me at bay with this shit, bro. Them 20 years in the game with this shit, my nigga. My music, my everything. So it's been hard for me. And then I won't bend over. I ain't spending the night over none of these niggas' houses and they couches, man. Word. Right. I feel you on that. You feel me? On it. The yep. office have been there, nigga. The mansion parties, all that. I just had to tell baby, just recently I had to make a confession, say, baby, hey, you know what? Tall lady. I said, hey, you know what? I got to tell you something. I said, because she only been to two red carpet parties with me. And this one particular red carpet was the Oscar party. And it was an unexpected uh, invite from my manager at the time from out of Atlanta. And so when she called me, told me, hey, they, I, I got an invite for you. Uh, uh, you're going to such, 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 such party. So she sent me the invites. Called baby, tell her, you know, slip some on, get dressed. We're going to a magic party. Get up there. I didn't tell her until recently. I said, look, you never knew when we were downstairs amongst all the jury and the fashions and all the networking that was going on. I said, you don't remember that little skinny dude that walked up to me and hollered at me and had me a bottle of champagne and was talking to me for a second. You don't remember that dude. If you can flash back to your mind, remember that little moment when he walked up to me because you were standing there talking to a woman about watches, about the swatch watches. She was networking for me. And so uh, I said, yeah, upstairs on the second and third level was two different parties, babe. She go, huh? I said, oh, yeah. Two different parties. Let me say, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, oh, yeah. She said, and I ain't talking about no pissy dissy party. This this going to show you how this ain't something that's just on one man. It ain't one individual. This is H. Wood, period, man. This is mm. what it is. And so this is the transitions I had been have to go through, bro, and the doors I've been have to knock down, and because of my aggression and you know my heterosexualism and my old homophobia and all these, I had to go through it, bro. I've been going through it, my nigga, for the, for the longest. So niggas be speaking on my name, but yeah. So I, I that's why I know I would be in his ear, man. Like nigga, do it right. Take that nigga sugar mistakes and do the shit right, nigga. Yeah. They only gonna give us one time with this shit. One time. My little homie tip my hat off to him top. He's doing his shit. He out the way in the cuts because he's doing his shit. He's doing it the right way. He took his formula and he stuck with his formula, bro. And that formula worked for him. So there's no need to go all outside with all the extra shit. I'm cool with my few millions that I'm getting and I'm gaining daily and night and, and yearly. Because I never had this coming out the projects. Right. I was written off. I wasn't supposed to be no successful, small time millionaire with a record label out of the Nixon Gardens. Right. So that's a blessing. And we both did that. We made it out of our hoods like that, bro. Coming from where we come from. And, and I did it before him. I'm coming out the trenches before him as far as on my banging level, my status. We, we on two different levels, two different pages when it comes to that. But that's my loved one, feel me? My homie, like my family. He, my, him and my little brother was best best of friends. Him, his little relative, and my little brother all grew up together. Slept in my mama house, his mama house. Little Daryl, rest in peace, a.k.a. Little Hitman in his house. I named his brother. That's how he got his name. Little Hit got his name. Because mm-hmm. I named his brother Big Hitman. So it's like, bro, we, it's, you know, that's, this is why it's so important for me to constantly speak on that factor that that's what making it out mean, man. When you make it out, make it out, bro. You don't owe it to no nigga to go back, to stand on no corner, nigga, or hang out. 
None of that. You ain't got to prove no fact to no nigga. Man, that don't make you hard or make you a man, bro. That make you stupid. Because now you gullible. Yeah. Especially if you get relaxed with these, these coyotes. You know these niggas was wolves. You was once a wolf. You was a hungry coyote out here, nigga, with saliva hanging out your mouth. Use your head and think. Right. <laughs> it ain't about being scared, nigga. It's about being wise and thinking. Feel me? Longevity, yeah. Like, man, I wish one of you, nigga, I'm, well, I'm gonna put you in your coyote place. Because <laughs> my vision is on, my antennas is on. I ain't doing all that hanging to make myself vulnerable. You see me, you see me. You feel yep. me? It's yep. simple, man. That's a fact. We got Nino Cappuccino, a.k.a. Bounty Hunter. Rules of Engagement, the real Cappuccino films on the Hip Hop and Sensor podcast, bro. We always appreciate your wisdom. Unfortunately, we got going a little late. We got some weird internet issues out here in New Jersey. Had the OG on a little sooner. That'd have been dope. But um, before we get up out of here, bro, we definitely appreciate you. Got to get you on in a couple of weeks to talk about some more stuff. We're running into time constraints right now. Let the people know where they can find you. Let the people know about Cappuccino Films. Sure. Let the people know where they can find Rules of Engagement, bro. Let the people know. Lay it out for them, man, so they can follow you. If they don't know you, I know. Man, if you don't know, you better know, man. If you do, just all you got to do is go to that bunnyhunterbj.com, man. Everything will pop up for you, man. Go to my IG, hit my link tree. Oh, about all several of my, my sites that pop up for you, man. Just go follow your boy, man. Follow me, man. Tap in with your mans, man. I'm here to inspire before I expire. That's no time soon, man. I'm not here for the buffoonery, the buffuckery. I'm not here to separate us, keep us separated, keep us down. I'm trying to be that one to step up to the plate and bring others to the plate so we can make a difference, bro. Because we all in the same game. At raise the that, raise the, raise the shirt, bro, right above your, your logo so people can see it. Yeah, we all in the same game, man. Same game, game. yes, sir. Gotcha. Yes, sir. Yeah, we all in the same game, homie. And it's always a pleasure, man, when I when I tap in with my men's, man. You feel me? Down there in the A, man. Big sin in the God, man. It's always a pleasure, man. Always, yes, homie. Man. Always a pleasure, man. We appreciate you, man. Thank you, man. You know the phone lines are always open, bro. Hit me whenever. Appreciate you, bro. Salute. Salute. Peace, brother. We gone.